You know, a lot of you have been waiting on God for a long time. You've been looking for a breakthrough. You've been hoping that something would happen in your favor. Some of you have been praying, wondering what's it going to take? How long is this going to last? And the enemy would like to many times whisper in our ear that God isn't enough. That God doesn't answer prayer. The enemy would like to get you to believe that God is not the creator of the world. The enemy wants to dilute what God is doing in your life. You see, God is more than enough for your life. I'm here to share with you the scriptures this morning to help us to understand that nothing is impossible with God. I know the scripture up here, uh, it says it's your time. But, but when God begins to move, when God begins to help you, it becomes your time. I'm reading in the scriptures here in, uh, about Mary. Remember Mary, the mother of Jesus? Mary was the one who, who, who birthed Jesus, was the one that, where, where God came and overshadowed. You know, I was reading this story and I was a little hesitant to share on it because it's not Christmas time. But you know, sometimes it's good to read these stories outside of the, the holiday season. They give different perspective, uh, different meaning. But I was looking at this story again, I, I found it very fitting. The life of Mary, the life of God. Did you know that the birth of Christ was nothing more than a miracle? The birth of Christ was nothing more than God answering prayer. For thousands of years, the Israelites waited, looking for God to answer their prayer. They were, they, their, their traditions were, were, were celebrated around the time that God would answer their prayer. Then, it seems like a long time passed, hundreds of years, God went silent. God wasn't speaking. God began to not show his face as he did in the past. The prophets weren't talking much about the birth, Jesus coming, the Messiah coming, the Savior of the world. There wasn't much notification. They started to get discouraged a little bit. Sometimes when God doesn't speak or when he goes silent, it seems we get discouraged. Sometimes when we begin to wonder what's going on in our life, we start to get a little discouraged and say, God, are you there? Are you hearing my prayers? Did I sin too much? Am I not talking to you enough? Where are you, God? God wants you to know this morning that He is there with you. He's helping you. And though there may be some seasons of dryness, there may be some times when you wonder what's going on, He is working all the time. You see, as we know, 400 years went by and, and there was no notification, there was no prophet standing up and saying, the Messiah is coming. Some of you are looking for God to give you a word that your breakthrough is... Along the way, your breakthrough is coming. But here's what happened. When there was silence, nothing going on, there was the birth. And here is the story about the birth. As a matter of fact, uh, it's the birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. We're talking this morning about it's your time. We're talking this morning about how God does miracles, how God works in your life. You know, as we look at this story, as we look at the birth of Christ, there's a few things I see. First of all, there was a visitation. What do you mean by that, Pastor? In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a, a, a town in Galilee. What is your breakthrough going to look like? 
What is your time going to look like when God comes to you? What is your, where, where God gives you something you've been praying about for a while? What's it look like? What's the components? How could you tell that God is working in your life? First of all, in the sixth month, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a town in Galilee. There was a visitation. Did you know that God wants to visit you? What do you mean by that? You know, as we come together, that's where miracles happen. You know, as you come together, that's where God cleanses your heart. As you sit in worship to Him. What does your breakthrough look like? What does God helping you look like? There was a visitation. God sent His, 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 his uh, angel. You know, it was not not just any angel. It was an archangel. Here's what I want to say to you. You've got to seek God's visitation in your life. What do you mean by that? You've got to say, God, I need you today. Without you, it's not going to happen. When the Holy Spirit came upon uh, uh, Mary, that was when God began to move. You know, the second quick thing to a virgin pledged to be married to a man. You know, I thought of this a little bit. First, there was a visitation. The angel visited Mary. Secondly, when we're talking about the birth of Christ, there was a virgin involved. And I began to contemplate that a little bit. Did you know that you need to have a pure heart and for God to give you what you're praying for? You know, God wants to prepare your heart for what he's going to give you. God wants to prepare your heart. You know, I remember when I was in Bible college, I went to the Dominican Republic with a, a, a small team of, of students. We were with another pastor, a seasoned pastor, and then we went to this uh, restaurant. We were building a, a, a clinic, I believe it was, down there in Lane Block. But we went out to this restaurant nearby. And, you know, we were rambunctious type of people and we all had past stories and uh, but uh, we, we ordered these pina coladas and uh, we we saw and we were making jokes we saw the seasoned pastor sitting over there but then we we said to the to the waiter waitress we said hey give us some pina coladas and then they said well okay what kind do you want I said, oh of course we want the virgin kind uh, I, I didn't know what that meant at that, but that meant the kind with no alcohol. I'm not going to tell you if I got the non-virgin or virgin, but, but, I, but, but it, in thinking about this, what it was me talking about this is that one had alcohol in it, one did not have alcohol in it. What they were saying was a type of uh, a, a, a drink that had purity and not, and, uh, as, as the definition would go. Here's what I want to say. What is God doing in your life? What have you been praying for? What are you anticipating? Did you know that there's a preparation time where God wants to purify your heart? God wants to get some things out of the way so that he can deposit what he wants to deposit in your life? You know, I know that's tough. But sometimes the best thing you could do is to prepare yourself for God. As a matter of fact, did you know that before the Israelites crossed the Jordan, right before they crossed the Jordan, Joshua said, hey, prepare yourself for tomorrow the Lord's going to do great things. Here's what I want to say to you. How are you preparing for the visitation? How are you preparing for your breakthrough, your miracle? You know about the best thing you could do is maybe get your heart to the place where God can give you what you're asking for. That's what happened. To a virgin pledged to be married to a man. You know, I thought about this. Not only was, was, was Mary a virgin, it says here that um, uh, there was married to a man named Joseph. You know, sometimes you got to step out. You know, uh, 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 Mary was young, and as and, uh, a uh, matter of fact, I don't think that Jesus could have came to, to at this time unless that there was this kind of scenario. Here's what I want to say. There may be a time where God is asking you to step out. Now, I'm, I'm not trying to read into the story, but I'm trying to look at it in a different light outside of the Christmas season to try to help you and I. First of all, when we're talking about a virgin pledged to be married, 
Uh, we're not talking about necessarily a virgin sexually, that kind of thing. We're talking about having our hearts clean. And did you know what? If you've ever messed it up in the past, if you've ever gone wrong, you say, you know, I, I, I can't go back. Look at my life. I've done some things. You know what? You can be a virgin before God in your heart. When I'm talking about a clean heart now, I'm using this terminology with, with receiving from God is if you come together like today and say, Lord, cleanse me. Lord, purify me. I've done some things this week. I've said some things this week that I don't like. Cleanse me. Did you know what you're doing? You're setting the stage for God to do a miracle in your life. Listen, it's very clear. You know when you have communion? It says in the scriptures, if you have something against your brother or your sister, go to them before you receive communion. Why is the, the scriptures talking about that? Because they know we've got to have a clean heart to receive healing in communion. To receive of God. You know, some of you have something against your brother or sister, you're carrying it around, and you're wondering why God is not giving you a breakthrough. You know, it's, it, it's not worth it. It's not worth having something. You know, you know, we all do this. We all have things, uh, 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 hostilities towards different people. We always have things in our hearts or grudges. But did you know, your, what God is doing in your life is much more greater and important than that thing you're carrying in or that thing you're holding on to? you got to release it. you got to get free from that. You see, your dream, your breakthrough is not much more important than that thing that's trying to keep you bound up. We're talking about that preparing. We're talking about for Cena. First, there was a visitation. God sent Gabriel to, to, to Nazareth. There, there's something, there's, there's some sense when it's your time that all the gates of hell cannot stop what God is doing in your life. We talked about that a moment ago. But I want you to understand before we go on to this third quick thing here that, listen, I don't care what the enemy is doing in your life. When God is about to release what he's doing in your life, nothing can stand away from that. Here, there was 400 years here. There was 400 years, uh, and it, it seems like, listen, you know, Mary could have been this or that, but when it was time, it was time. Here's what I want to say. Some of you better be ready for the breakthrough that God is doing in your life. You've waited. You've prayed. There's been some dark times. There's been some times where you try to get it right or this, but none of us are perfect. But no matter what, there comes a time when God is ready to break through the clouds, when God is ready to deposit, when God is about ready to give it to you, it's yours. I want you to get an expectation, an anticipation about what God is about to do in your life. What do you mean by that, Pastor? It would be so easy for you to think, no, it's not going to happen. You know, I was reading a story and at the end of it, you know what Mary said at the end of it? Do unto me as what you said. Some of you got to say, God, do to me what you said. What do you mean? What did you say? You have some desires in your heart, don't you? You have some dreams that you want to see. You have some things that you want to see God do. You know what you got to do? God, give it to me. Do what you've said. Allow it to come forth. The enemy is going to try to stop. The enemy is going to try to hold back. But God, nothing is impossible for God. No, listen, it would be easy for you to say, oh, it's not going to happen. I want to get your, I want somehow to get your courage up this morning and get, understand that nothing is impossible with God. You're with God, aren't you? Sure you are. You're, you're a child of more. Nothing is impossible. That healing. Could you imagine a, a birth like this? Could you, who, who would have thought of it? We take it for granted today. But this is something that when Herod was ruling, it never should have happened. And it happened. Did you know what you're believing for can happen? Did you know what you're praying, what you've been praying for can happen? Here he goes on to a virgin pleasure to be married, to a descendant of David. You say, okay, and we're just going through this. You know, I was reading about the different things that make up your breakthrough, the different things that make up your time. It says that here that uh, uh, Mary was a descendant of, of David. Well, how do you qualify there? You're in Christ, aren't you? You, you know, nothing's impossible 
with God. So by being in Christ, you fulfill that for you, uh, criteria. You're here this morning and you've given your life to God. You've dedicated your child. You qualify for nothing being impossible with God in your life. A descendant of David. You're a descendant of David. You're, you're someone that has been born into the kingdom. You're someone that, that has received the gift of life. You qualify for this. Nothing is impossible with God. This morning, the virgin name was Mary. You know, I missed this on, on verse 26, in the sixth month. Did you know there's a specific time that God has for you where he's going to release what he's done for you? This is a specific time. So you say, when's it going to happen? There's a specific time. In the sixth month, there's not by all these words I believe are breathed of God. They all have meaning to it. In the six months, you say, when is it going to be in the sixth month? No, here's what I'm going to say. It's going to be in the time that God has for you. Amen. Friend, it's going to happen. God is going to do it. You need to somehow understand that nothing is impossible. Can this week be the, allow the words to uh, go over you that nothing is impossible with God? When something begins to say in your mind, no, it's not going to happen, you say back. As Jesus said back to say, nothing is impossible with God. Let that be the words that you somehow, your defense, when fear comes to you, when you're wondering, are you capable enough? Are you good enough? Uh, do you have enough? Nothing is impossible for God. What are you believing for this morning? What are you looking for God to do in your life? What do you want God to help you with? Can it happen to you? Yes, it can. Here we go. The angel went to her and said, Greetings. You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. You know the third quick thought here. It has much more to do with Elizabeth. But let me, let me stay with the V's a little bit. There was vindication. You know, right before the verses before this, it talks about Elizabeth. Elizabeth was barren. They both had children at the same time. Elizabeth and Mary, cousins. And, and, and right before, they use the same words. You're highly favored, Elizabeth. And you're, 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 you've been vindicated. What people have thought about you now is changing. Some people have misjudged you. Some people have said the wrong story. You know, on Facebook, they have these things where you add to your story. We're talking about your story this morning. They, they f comes up and you could add what components of your story, your life. You know, your story's being written. Let me talk about your story for a moment. Some of you have misun been misunderstood. The world hasn't understood you. You know why the world hasn't understood you? Because God's hand has been on your life. Some of you, you know, your relatives don't understand you and it's easy to be, get slighted. It's easy to be prejudged. And it's easy to understand what's going. The angel went to her and this is the end of, uh, uh, of, of this portion of the story. But the angel wanted Mary to understand that she found favor in the sight of God. Here's what I want to say. Friend, God has favored you. God has put his hand on your life. You've got to recognize it, that you're a chosen individual. You are a new creation. You can't live your life any which way anymore. You've been chosen. God has called you. You have a purpose. You have a destiny. There's something that God wants to do in your life. He has an assignment for you. You can't live your life any which way. you got to have your incubator of a heart where God drops things in your heart and it's cleansed and, and it's purified. you got to get that stuff out of there. It's not worth it because you're receiving much more what God has for you. Yes. We see here that the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. Before this, Elizabeth was wondering, Hey, I can't have children. She was elderly in age and she has been looking for this a long time. And the, the, the angel said, you've been highly favored and you're with child. You're in your sixth month. Here's what I wanted to say to you. Some of you are pregnant with what God has and you don't even know it. You thought you were barren. You thought it's not going to work out. You thought you've been passed over. You thought that it, you're too late. You showed up too late. 
You thought that it's not going to happen. And God wants to tell you that he's been with you all the time. Yes. That he's favored you. That he's blessed you. I know that it may be hard for you to understand because people have ridiculed you. They said this about you and they haven't given you a chance. But listen, I want you to understand that God saw you from the beginning and he had a plan from you from the start of your inception. The enemy would try to whisper in your ear that God doesn't love you, that God, you made too many mistakes, you, you've done wrong. But God wants you to know this morning that he's been with you all along. As Elizabeth thought she was barren. Elizabeth thought that she couldn't, she, she, she was looked over. And to be without child in those days was like today, but not much, ten times worse, where they thought there's something wrong. Did they do something wrong? Is there something wrong with them? Is there something in their heritage? What? Why are they barren? Questions. Some of you have had some questions wondering, why don't I have this husband? Why don't I have this family? Why don't I have the job that this person has? Why do I keep going through cycle after cycle? What's wrong with me? Nothing is wrong with you. God has his hand on your life, and he knows what he's doing in your life. <laughs> Friend, if God be for you, who dare be against you? We see in there, the angel went to her and said, greetings. Some of you are about to get a greeting. What do you mean by that? You see, when Mary received this, she could have said, no, this can't happen. You know, uh, as a matter of fact, Mary did say it more. You know, how could this happen? I have never been with a man. How can this happen? I, I, how can this work out? I've never been with a man. It, 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 listen, with God, all things are possible. I don't have the education. I don't have what it takes. I don't have the money. With God, all things are possible. You know, that's where the scripture comes. The scripture says here, verse 38, 37, For nothing is impossible for God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Can you receive this morning what God has for you in our closing prayer? In our closing prayer, can you receive the miracle that God has for you? Can you receive the breakthrough? Can you somehow say, God, I receive what you've given me? Close your eyes for a moment. Father, your people love you. Your people need you. Lord Jesus, nothing is impossible with God. Many times we say that, but the scripture comes out of Mary here. How that she received the Messiah. Here's what I want to say, Lord. Would you do to your people as you desire? Would you give them the breakthrough? Would you help them, we pray? Lord Jesus, nothing is impossible with God. We put our trust in you this morning. We put our trust in you. We don't put our trust in man. With man, there are impossibilities. With you, there are not. So we love you this morning. Fight for your people this week. Help your people, we pray. Encourage them, we pray. Bless them, we pray. We love you. We honor you. We thank you. While you're closing your eyes, is there someone here that would say, I need God in my life. I need God to help me. Is there someone here that would say, I need God's favor in my life? If that's you, raise your hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Can we pray this prayer together? Dear Jesus, I love you. I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. Cleanse me. Come into my life. Take away all guilt. All sin. In Jesus' name. Now God bless your people. Give them a good week. Help them, we pray. Fight for them, we pray. God, we're so very thankful. 
for You being our God and our Savior. Help Your people, we pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's stand together.